Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Commander Navy Installations Command Change of Command Ceremony, where Vice Admiral Mary Jackson will be relieved by Vice Admiral Yancey Lindsay. The presiding officer of this ceremony will be the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Michael Gilday. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the challenge facing our nation and our world. COVID-19 is changing life for us all. The U.S. Navy remains focused on protecting our Navy family while maintaining our readiness to defend our nation. Continuity of command and its pre de corps are paramount to that readiness. And thus we gather, under different circumstances than normal, but with continued dedication to maintaining our proud tradition of the change of command. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Mary Jackson, Commander, Navy Installations Command. Good morning. Today's ceremony is certainly a divergence from what we have become accustomed to in our profession. Typically, it's a large reunion. We have the opportunity to visit with lots of shipmates from long past and an opportunity to honor the team and to say thank you. Thank you to those in the audience. Today, it looks and feels a little different. And I definitely miss having the sea of your faces to connect with as I stand here today. But the core of this tradition remains the same. I will read my orders. I will be relieved by Vice Admiral Lance, Yancey Lindsay, and we will exchange salutes and turn over command. Today, we are honored to have Admiral Gilday, the 32nd Chief of Naval Operations, as our presiding officer. It's a huge honor to have you here today, sir. Admiral Gilday is a fellow surface warfare officer with an impressive career, both ashore and afloat. He commanded Carrier Strike Group 8 on board USS Dwight D. Eisenhower. He also served as commander of Fleet Cyber Command. He also happened to be my detailer at one point, so you see how that worked out. He assumed command of the United States Navy in August 2019. Boss, thank you so much for being here today, to you and to Linda. Ladies and ge gentlemen, please welcome the 32nd Chief of Naval Operations. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. With every challenge, there is opportunity. There's a silver lining. And so there are changes of command across this Navy, across the joint, the joint force every Friday. Uh, but this is one that none of us will forget. Uh, so for those of you here, the families, it's so special to have you here for this. Uh, this is a once in a lifetime event. Uh, having just promoted um, uh, Admiral Lindsay to Vice Admiral, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, and the you know, the collective IQ of the flag wardroom just went up one sigma um, with, with him as a three star. But for those who are tuning in remotely and those who will watch this in the future, um, thank you. Uh, thanks for taking the time to participate uh, from afar with your cups of coffee this morning as you lean back and you celebrate um, this phenomenal command uh, and what they do in our Navy and these two absolutely spectacular officers. So good morning family, friends, shipmates, and thank you all who are joining us remotely. Mary, Yancey, thank you for letting me take part in this event. It's an honor for both Linda and I to be here this morning. We've all had to make changes in the way that we live and the way that we work over the past couple months. Nobody knows that better than the team at CNIC. You have quickly adapted to the new realities here at home. One change is how we celebrate important events, like this change of command. But at its core, as Admiral Jackson just mentioned, this gathering fundamentally remains the same. Today, we still bear witness to the mantle of command transferring from one spectacular leader to another. Today, all the authority and the responsibility and the accountability for our phenomenal shore enterprises will pass from Vice Admiral Jackson to Vice Admiral Lindsay with one simple salute. And it is a Herculean responsibility. Our shore enterprise is massive. With 53,000 military and Navy civilian personnel 
working in 71 installations that span our globe. The Shore Enterprise is foundational, I believe, to generating naval power. Today, in the midst of a global pandemic, we have 100 ships sailing, we have squadrons flying, and we have submarines patrolling silently as they have for the past six decades. The fleet is at sea, keeping America secure. We are assuring our allies and partners, and we are deterring our competitors. American naval power provides, in the words of General Krulak, a certain force for an uncertain world. But we can't do any of that. We can't do any of it without the shore. The 71 Navy bases and places around the globe and our sailors and our phenomenal Navy civilians who operate them generate naval power. Our float commands rely on our installations for protection, for repair, for training, and for replenishment so that they can head back to sea. The shore is in many ways our Navy's readiness engine. Our sailors and our civilians run this engine. Our security forces and emergency services stand the watch 24-7 to keep us safe. We saw that last week at Corpus Christi. They keep the water running and they keep the lights on. And they plan for and respond to a host of contingency, contingencies excuse me, that run the spectrum, from earthquakes to hurricanes and wildfires, from floods to contagion. And the demands on our shore shipmates don't stop there. Our sailors and their families rely on you. They rely on our installations and those that lead them to provide fitness and childcare, housing, food, recreation activities, and for many of us, a home. While a strong and vibrant shore infrastructure prepares our sailors to sail into harm's way, it also provides many with peace of mind. Peace of mind that their family is safe and secure and things are stable while they are at sea. In the military, we're nomads. We move often, sometimes across the world. In the midst of these disruptions, our installations provide a much needed sense of community and stability. The memories of Americans have of their hometowns, we have of our installations. So today is a celebration. I know that Admiral Jackson and Admiral Lindsay want it to be a cel celebration of you, the readiness generators and the community builders ashore, and the incredible leadership of Admiral Jackson that has put us in this place. That's why today I am very pleased to recognize her leadership but also, and more importantly, as she would emphasize to me, the efforts of thousands of sailors and civilians with a special award. Master of Ceremonies, will you please read the citation? Yes, sir. The Secretary of the Navy takes pleasure in presenting the Meritorious Unit Commendation to Commander Navy Installations Command for service as set forth in the following citation. For meritorious achievement from 1 March, 2017 to 30 May 2020, the personnel of Commander Navy Installations Command consistently provided extraordinary support to 10 Navy Regions, 71 installations, and 58,000 personnel. Their swift and comprehensive response to natural and man-made disasters including hurricanes, wildfires, active shooter events, and the coronavirus 2019 pandemic mitigated damage, prevented loss of life, delivered assistance to families, and rapidly restored fleet operations and strategic missions. Their strategic objectives supported a fleet and security force readiness, ensuring Navy installations were ready to complete all mission tasks. They provided exceptional support through fleet and family readiness programs, including the Wounded Warrior Games, Navy Family Framework, and privatized housing that maximized the physical, intellectual, economical, emotional, and social readiness of the Navy family during a highly dynamic and demanding period of operations. Their superb transformation of business and financial processes, including merging with Naval Facilities Engineering Command into a single budget submitting office and transitioning from a working capital to a general fund organization, provided the Navy increased flexibility in services delivery and significantly improved 
its ability to properly account for facilities and infrastructure. By their truly distinctive accomplishments, unrelenting perseverance, and unfailing devotion to duty, the officers, enlisted personnel, and civilian employees of Commander, Navy Installations Command, reflect the credit upon themselves and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the Secretary, Admiral Mike Gilbert. That citation says it better than I ever could. Uh, it's a tough act to follow. Thank you, boy. Congratulations to the United States. Congratulations to all of you. To be sure, that citation represents the efforts of a phenomenally huge team, but it's also a reflection of leadership. Many of you know Vice Admiral Jackson is big on ownership, and she has emphasized this as a leader for many, many years. She took ownership from her first command as a destroyer captain. She, she took command of the USS McFall while deployed. She protected critical maritime infrastructure from the sea as part of Task Force 158 at the height of the war in Iraq. From this crucible, she took ownership to a role as mayor of our largest naval base in the world. In both of those tours, she saw the critical role our shore infrastructure plays in keeping our ships and sailors ready for sea and our families safe. Mary understands the value of initiative and she understands the value of toughness. She's resilient. She's been a trailblazer for women in our Navy and a role model for us all. And as I read her quarterly uh, newsletter to all our uh, sisters in the uh, surface warfare community, I'm filled with pride every time I read it. And Mary, your leadership has so much to do with it. And there are thousands of women in the Navy, across our Navy, that are cheering for you today. And they're going to miss you. But you've touched them in an impactful way that will, that will for, forever leave an indelible imprint on their lives, not just their careers. Maybe it was the years of cowboy, cowboy camp in Texas, or growing up in the Middle East, but Mary Jackson seemed destined to live a life of adventure and consequence. And we are so fortunate she did so in a Navy uniform. Under her watch, CNIC transitioned from the shore integrator to the owner. That ownership helped confront a range of challenges, natural disasters like hurricanes, wildfires, and earthquakes, active shooters, improving housing for sailors and their families, no small feat, and freeing our float commands to focus on their own challenging missions. She quickly implemented a strategic housing improvement plan to exercise strong leadership, reinforce military oversight, and most importantly, regain resident trust. During her tenure, she led her team towards data and metrics using them to find new efficiencies. Yet she remained clear-eyed, clear-eyed about places where dollars simply couldn't reach. And she made tough, risk-informed decisions. She also owned the finances of our installations, completing an inventory of all our real property. <laughs> no small accomplishment. She understands, she knows too well, that every dollar counts, every dollar contributes to generating and sustaining naval power for our citizens. And if you ask anybody fortunate enough to serve with her, they will mention her selfless devotion to sailors and complete devotion to the mission. Every single one, every single one, will tell you they were blessed to have worked with and to have learned from Admiral Mary Jackson. Two quick vignettes. When we had the terrible shooting down in Pensacola, uh, that involved um, our partners from Saudi Arabia. And it was a horrific event. And Mary went down there. And at the time, the ambassador, the Saudi ambassador to the United States, she, uh, he, she also went down there. And Mary had spent time growing up in Saudi Arabia, so she understood the culture. She knew how they felt. And only Mary could convey, could connect 
with that Saudi to talk about that incident and frame it in a way that as terrible as, uh, as that country felt about the action of one of their citizens, that Mary brought it to a human level in a way that I don't think anybody else could have. Last week after the shooting and um, after, the, after the incident at Corpus Christi at the gate uh, where Petty Officer acted so heroically, Mary sent me a short note and uh, of course she sent me Petty Officer's phone number and said, uh, no expectation, but here's her phone number just in case. That's Mary Jackson. What a nice touch and what a great conversation I had cold calling Petty Officer one morning and uh, maybe even waking her up. But it was just an uplifting conversation. And um, with everything else going on in CNIC, to think about those pieces that are absolutely critical says a lot about the person that is Mary Jackson. Mary, I can't thank you enough for what you have done over the past three years here at CNIC. Our Navy is stronger for your time on watch. And we know that, we, we know that you would credit your family for providing the strength to stand that watch. Lee, I hear tomorrow's a big day as well. Congratulations on 27 years of marriage. Thank you for your sacrifice and your support during the last three decades. And thank you for your service in the Army and the Coast Guard, especially after 9-11. During many of these years, you and Mary showed all of us how to live a shared life of service while building a wonderful family. Rylander and Wheeler, you both supported your mom and your dad as they took care of all of us. Being in a Navy family can be tough, but it's also an adventure. Thank you for the sacrifices that you made for our country. I promise the gift of your mom's time has made our Navy and our nation stronger. Just as we are sad to see you go, we're also excited for what lies ahead for you. Yancey, Stacy, and Hannah, welcome back to the Navy Yard. We are thrilled to see you carry on Navy's moment Mary's momentum in strengthening our naval power from the shore. I know that like Mary, Yancey, you are a servant leader, putting the needs of our sailors and their families above all else. I am excited to see where you will take our shore enterprise. Our sailors and their families are in good hands as you build upon Mary's long list of successes. And for the families, we owe you all a debt that we can never quite repay. Thank you for your enduring support for both of these officers. I'll just close with this. While many of us are separated physically today, we remain united in spirit and in our commitment to protect and to serve this great Navy and this great nation. God bless you all, and thank you. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Distinguished Service Medal to Vice Admiral Mary M. Jackson, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following citation. For exceptionally meritorious service to the United States, in a duty of great responsibility as Commander, Navy Installations Command from March 2017 through May 2020. Vice Admiral Jackson's visionary leadership was instrumental in dramatically improving the organizational structure, program integration, and financial oversight of 10 Navy regions with 71 globally dispersed installations and 58,000 personnel. Driving efficiency through innovation, she guided the command through a significant expansion of the Navy's shore infrastructure that enabled marked improvements in fleet readiness. She aligned the shore enterprise with the priorities of the Chief of Naval Operations, incorporated future mission growth into every aspect of decision-making in order to better sustain the fleet, enable the warfighter, and support the family. Vice Admiral Jackson's superior performance of duties culminated her 32 years of honorable and dedicated military service. By her superior leadership, wise judgment, and deep devotion to duty, Vice Admiral Jackson reflected great credit upon herself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. Thank you for your, your incredibly kind comments, very generous comments. Most importantly, thank you for everything you said about our incredible team. It is such an honor, it has been such an honor to serve, to serve them. And uh, the award that I've received 
as well as the huge surprise of the meritorious unit accommodation uh, is really their uh, representative of, of their work. I couldn't be more thankful for the time that you've taken to, to recognize them. And I will always wear uh, my award uh, in recognition of the work that they've done. So thank you so much. For those of you both near and over the horizon who are watching this now, thank you uh, for joining us. The fact that we are not gathered in person is, is quite somber. But there's also a silver lining. As we forge ahead with these new virtual efforts for ceremonies such as this, not only do we get to share the day perhaps with a few more people, but uh, I also saved you from trying to drive onto the Navy Yard and find a parking place, and also a certain uh, to be nightmare receiving line. It would be a mile or so long. So. So uh, enjoy your coffee. As we've already heard mentioned, the true purpose of a ceremony such as this is to demonstrate the absolute transfer of command from one person to another. I could not be more pleased to welcome Vice Admiral Lindsay and his family to this headquarters team. He's no stranger to the shore enterprise and has led three of our 10 regions, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, one on the other side of the pond. He also, prior to that, served on the Secretary of the Navy staff and commanded, as CNO said, one of our crown jewel installations, Naval Base Coronado. On top of all that, Yancey and Stacy have been close friends as we've served together the past 10 years. Yancey is more than ready to join this team and lead the shore to the next level. Lee and I congratulate both of you and, of course, your entire family. Your time will go fast. It will go really fast. Enjoy every minute of it. It is definitely a marathon at a sprint pace. And we look forward to hearing about your many, many, many successes. I'd also like to welcome Master Chief Adari, who's joining you step in as well. Nashi Patari comes from Navy Region Hawaii, and he is, as of this morning, the new CIC Force Master Chief. So the two of you will be a great team together. So welcome also Nashi Patari. I found it helpful as I was developing the remarks for today to reflect back on three points I highlighted when I took command. They are as compelling today as they were three years ago. About these three sanctities again, and finish off by tying a bow on the end of my career. I don't think it's quite hit me yet, and let's hope it doesn't hit me in the middle of the ceremony or these remarks. First off, I believe in the sanctity of the mission. I have felt that compulsive drive guided by mission in every tour I have served, and having just served as your commander. I am even more passionate about the sanctity of the shore mission. And you heard CNO talk about those missions, many of them. Our installations remain complex platforms, truly a system of systems with complex command and control, lots of dotted line environments. Often in charge of little but responsible for all, especially when the you-know-what hits the fan, it can certainly be a thankless job. For our Navy, from setting sea detail to getting underway, to landing our nation's naval power back at home, to the heart and soul of our Navy family, our Navy installations and the shore enterprise are relevant and foundational. Foundational in the sense that we own a lot of brick and mortar, but it's not just the real estate. It's also the running of large security teams, ports, airfields, emergency response, fleet and family customer services, building relationships inside and outside the fence line. So much of what our installations deliver is similar to running a city. Let's never forget that we touch every other enterprise, and by extension, every family member and every veteran. In those communities that sound, surround our installations, 
Our installations are a critical link to our Navy's ability to generate power and presence. The departure gate, the arrival gate, as we send our Navy forward and for them to be forward. And when in home port, the place to train, to maintain, to regenerate, to replenish, to protect from pandemics, to do those tasks that allow us to remain tough and agile and resilient. We are part of the readiness equation. We contribute to every line of effort within the CNO's priorities. And I am inspired knowing that everything we do makes an impact in some way or another in the life of our entire Navy team. That is the why for our service. Nothing happens in the shore without an experienced, tenured, passionate, and dedicated workforce. This is the sanctity of our people. So first the mission, second the people. These past three years have given me a front row seat to the superstar cast we have leading the shore. From the most junior personnel at the installations to the most senior here at my headquarters staff, we drove hard on many, many really complex issues and at all levels, at every echelon. We were handed a plateful of unexpecteds also along the way from being the pilot projects for fiscal reform and audit to our journey navigating through housing crises and this pandemic. And again, you heard much of that recognized in the meritorious unit commendation. And those are only a few of the more high profile efforts. I've witnessed you under pressure through difficult situations and I've seen you work through complex and fast moving issues. Your agility is eye-watering. I am and will always remain your most loyal advocate. I've learned from you, been mentored by you, and studied your programs. Serving as your commander has really been all about watching you shine. And when others notice, being the person that gets to say thank you for all of your hard work, all your blood, sweat, and tears. You did it all and you made it happen. The last of the three points I spoke about three years ago is the sanctity of the team. This is perhaps the hardest thing for me to personally walk away from. I've been a casual observer and a figurehead of many high performing teams. And serving as your commander of the Shore Enterprise has been a highlight of my career. And it is an honor that I will forever, forever treasure. There is nothing quite like that feeling of teamsmanship when everyone is rowing hard in the same direction. As a plebe at the Naval Academy, I had one particular law the Navy especially grilled and drilled into me. On the strength of the link of the cable dependeth the might of the chain, who knows when thou may be tested, so live that thou bearest the strain. I def definitely did not understand it then, and perhaps then it was directed in a more singular manner. But now it is all about the team, represented by the links of an anchor chain. I've been honored to be a link in that chain, working towards common goals and common mission, serving alongside the best the nation has to offer, each team member bringing their best talents forward and also being willing and humble enough to listen and learn. I could go on and on about these teams, teams internal to CNIC, such as with the executive encodes and the region commanders, teams comprised of, of other echelon commands like Naval Facilities Command, one of our closest partners, and to Admiral John Corka, I give a huge, a huge, huge shout out to your team and the partnership that you've had with me during this tenure, and also to Vice Admiral Williamson at OPNAV N4. Teams led by Echelon 1 or fleet commanders. Teams across service lines with my shore colleagues in other services like the Marine Corps, the Air Force, the Army, and the Coast Guard. Teams with our strongest partners and communities like military advocacy committees, state and federal partners, military and veteran service organizations like Fisher House, Safe Harbor, Navy Marine Corps Relief Society and the USO, Navy Service Family Line, 
Armed Services YMCA, and that is only a few. Our housing partners and our congressional leaders as well. Team after team after team. The list goes on, but the point is this. We do not go at it alone. That would only lead to failure. These engagements and partnerships, internal and external, are the key to our success. I will miss being on your team. Thank you to each and every individual and organization out there that has joined hands with us at CNIC. Through thick and thin, you have made us all better. And now to put a bow on it all, 32 years have flown by. I leave our Navy today feeling like it never owed me anything. And if there were sacrifices, they were part of the honor of serving. I wish I could thank each of you who has given so very much to me and my family, who has inspired me, taught me, mentored me, and calibrated me. From, induc from induction day at the Naval Academy, when quite frankly, I had absolutely, <laughs> absolutely no clue what I was getting into, to today, a rather unlikely three star, the shipmates, the teammates, the friendships along the way are what I take with me as I cross the brow. These are the memories, experiences, lessons, and gifts that you have bestowed upon me, and I can think of no adequate words to express my emotions. A couple of quick call-outs to a few. Boss, to you, Vice Chief Burke, those who came before you, like Admiral Richardson, Admiral Moran, Admiral Smith, the present and past four stars, all my former bosses throughout the many years, thank you for the trust and confidence you have bestowed upon me. To the flag and SES wardroom, and also the McPon leadership mess, I'm honored to have served alongside you. This is by far the C-suite of choice, and I continue to be in awe of your dedication to our Navy. To the many sailors and officers along the way who inspired me to serve, and especially to those who sailed in ships with me, from my first Chief Petty Officer, ETC McNamee, every step of the way to the fabulous sailors at CNIC, you made a more lasting and meaningful, meaningful contribu contribution to me than I could have ever given you. To each of my front office teams, since being a flag officer and the triads before that, you've seen me under the best and worst of times, especially this week, it started off a little rocky, I was in denial. But you have been my friends and family also. I could not have served in this capacity without you. I wish I could recognize each one of you. I was blessed with an amazing rock star front office team, two fabulous executive directors, and two amazing and passionate and salt of the earth force master chiefs, Master Chief Timmons and Master Chief Thompson. To the class of 88, and especially my company mates in 13th Company, it seems like just yesterday. I gain strength from you every day, especially through Facebook posts, and I value more than ever those four years we spent together on the Severn. To my sisters in arms and my closest girlfriends, you have been the shoulders I have cried on, the role models I have admired, and the shipmates that I have rallied alongside. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To the former CNIC commanders, thank you for being there for me during this tour, for the role models that you have, and I have been absolutely honored to walk in your footsteps. And to each and every region commander that I served with the installation and the installation COs, you are the brain trust of this organization. You will forever hold my highest regard. We ask so very much of you, and you make it happen. To the PAO and her crack team of specialists, you made this go virtual as, as well as many other things, so thank you. And to my extended family, especially my Texas cousins who you have heard mentioned earlier, I will look, look forward to seeing you at our annual reunion at Cowboy Camp without my iPhone, without the work crises and stress. And for the family I've not been able to see over the years, watch out. Road trips are on the horizon, because I don't think any of us want to get it in a plane anytime soon. 
To my parents, my parents have long passed. They were true pioneers. They set me on this course, and I know they're watching from above. I really wish they could have been here today. To my family, to my family, to my husband Lee and my beautiful children, time to step off the roller coaster. As fun as it was, stepping off means a little less twists and turns. I'm so very proud of who we are as a family, having weathered the highest highs and the lowest lows together. And for, for who you are each individually. Thank you for your love. I love you with all my heart. Thank you. To see and I see, words just don't cut it. But thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I wish I could do a roll call of appreciation. You've all touched my life along the way, and you've bolstered me. And you have given me, again, more than I could have ever given you. The past month or so, I've had a card on my desk, one that I look at every day. It's a proper quote from one of my favorite authors, Dr. Seuss. And it says, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. It's time to step aside. I'm grateful for these past three years, so very, very grateful for, and for this amazing career. Missions above self, surrounded by superstars, and on a winning team. I couldn't have asked for more. These three sanctities I started with are where we are today. Please keep our service members, our civilians, and their families, many who are in harm's way, in your hearts, minds, and prayers. Bless the entire shore enterprise. Bless our Gold Star families and our wounded warriors and anyone experiencing tragedy or loss. And may God bless our United States Navy and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. When directed by reporting senior, detach in May 2020 from duty as commander, Navy Installations Command for transfer to the retired list. I'm a Lindsay. I am ready to be relieved. I will now read my orders. From Chief of Naval Operations, subject change of duty orders for Vice Admiral Yancey Lindsay. CNO Order 1140, when directed by reporting senior detachment duty as commander in Navy Region Europe, Africa Central, and report not later than May 2020 for duty in a flying status not involving flying as commander, Navy Installations Command. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander, Navy Installations Command, Vice Admiral Yancey Lindsay.
So, you know, thank you for your faith and confidence in me and for the opportunity to lead the Navy Shore Enterprise. Thank you also for recognizing the accomplishments of the men and women of Navy Installations Command. They're America's finest, and the longer I serve, the more I appreciate what they do for our country. Linda, it's especially an honor that you honor us with your presence today, and you further emphasize the importance of family to service and also to our Navy. So thank you for being here today. I want to thank the CNIC front office staff for my warm welcome aboard and for ensuring I stepped off on the right foot here, and especially for taking such great care of me and my family during our two-week ROM period. Specifically, Warrant Officer Dale, Commander Siegel, Lieutenant Commander Hightower, Senior Chief Mason and Chavera, Captain Collins, Captain Love, Captain Rawway, and the entire PA team. This may not be a traditional change of command ceremony as we've known with all the trappings, but it was still a heavy lift to pull it together. Thank you all. I also want to thank Vice Admiral Jackson. I guess I can call you Mary now. Mary. <laughs> for the exhaustive turnover, but also for your friendship. Ma'am, I've thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to serve with you. I speak for the entire Shore Enterprise when I say that we've all benefited from your dedication and from your leadership. Capstone buddy, I'll sing for you anytime. Stacy and I offer our heartfelt thanks for your Lees, Rylanders, and Wheelers service. We wish you all the fairest of winds and the calmest of following seas. God bless you all. To my family and friends, our family and friends who couldn't be here today, I know they're supporting us from afar, and as always, we cherish their thoughts and their prayers. Thank you all for your support. And my mother and father could not be here today, um, but I know they're here in spirit, and I love you, Mom and Dad. To my bride, Stacy, and our daughters, Haley and Hannah, Aunt Hannah, who's here with us today, words can never express how much your love, support, and sacrifice means to me. Thank you for your service. I love you. <laughs> Navy Installations Command, it's an honor and a privilege to serve with you. Thank you for your commitment and your dedication. What you do each and every day makes a difference for our Navy and for our nation. Thank you all, and God bless. Let us receive the benediction. O Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. With grateful hearts, we celebrate the gift of Avril Mary Jackson. Our Navy is a witness to the impact of her superlative leadership. Lord, with grateful hearts, we warmly receive Avril Yancey Lindsay and his family to the Capitol area once again. Lord, we pray blessings, blessings upon the Jackson family and upon the Lindsay family. Bless them in their rising up and in their laying down. Bless them in all of their aspirations and be gracious unto them now and always. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us today. This concludes our ceremony.